on my journey of reconnecting with myself and being on my healing journey there were a lot of different mindset shifts and a lot of things that i had to do so today i want to share with you five things that i've been doing to feel more feminine and get reconnected to my femininity Hey there loved ones, my name is Sonya Star J and this is Fully Loving Yourself. If you are new here, welcome. And if you are returning, welcome back. So on my journey of healing my body from fibroids and healing my emotional trauma and just reconnecting with myself, there have been so many things that I have learned and so many things that I have done. And when you hear about femininity and feminine energy versus masculine energy, I feel like a lot of it is centered around like relationships and you know just you being a woman but in the way that I've been learning how to reconnect to my femininity it has more so been about connecting to my womb space and my femininity in that way and so that's what I'm going to be talking about today if you are not yet subscribed to the channel please make sure to become one of my loved ones and join the community so I mentioned in several of my videos that there's a book that I'm reading called The Secret Languages of Your Body. And in that book, it talks about how if you're dealing with anything womb related in your cervix, your uterus, your ovaries, that that is a sign that you are disconnected from your feminine energy. And when I thought about it, I'm like, I feel very feminine. I feel like I show up in a feminine way, but there are different like mindset shifts that I needed to heal and fix in order to truly become connected to myself again. There were things that I needed to do to release the guilt and shame around my sexuality and my sensuality and to really step into myself and not look at womanhood and femininity in a negative way. Growing up, there was a lot of shame and guilt that was around becoming a woman, having your cycle, and there weren't really positive conversations around sex and sexual health or hormonal health or reproductive health at all. So through me learning how to be more feminine and reconnect to my feminine energy and balancing my feminine and masculine energy, it has allowed me to show up better for myself in my life. And it has also helped me in my relationships and it has helped me to realize who I want to be in this world and how I want to show up in the world. So the first thing that I want to discuss is cycle syncing. And I have brought this up so many times because I want everyone to know what cycle syncing is whenever they come across any of my videos because it is that important. It is something that we should have learned when we were younger. It is something that women need to know across the board and cycle syncing is essentially the practice and knowledge of knowing how to operate within your 28 day cycle as a woman and that has honestly opened my world up to so many different possibilities. It has allowed me to be softer and it has allowed me to be more gentle with myself, more compassionate and understanding of the things that I go through as a woman. And it has allowed me to stop operating on the more masculine side of things where I used to want to hustle, hustle, hustle and do all these things. And I still struggle with that a little bit now because it is a unconditioning that you have to go through in order to make that shift right but the more time that I take and the more that I practice these habits and and doing the workouts when I'm supposed to be doing the workouts and eating things when I'm supposed to be eating them and educating myself as much as I can it is allowing me to connect with my feminine energy and my femininity in that way learning cycle syncing has taught me to love on myself I'm honestly so grateful that I was introduced to this idea and the book that I always mention is In the Flow by Anissa Vaiti. I will link it in the description box below. I think that's how you say her name. Either way, I will link it in the description box below for you to get this book for yourself or for a niece or granddaughter or your own daughter. That book really taught me about how rest is productive and how it's okay for us to slow down. And the second thing that I've been doing to allow myself to feel more feminine and be connected to my femininity is asking for help and allowing help. Now this is something that I've always struggled with. 
I'm not sure why. Maybe it's because I'm the oldest daughter. I'm the oldest everything. And I've always just been a person. Like, I can do it myself. I can get this done myself. If nobody's willing to help me, I'll just get it done. Whereas now I'm in a space of, no, I'm going to ask somebody to help me with this thing because this is a challenge for me and it's a struggle. And while it's okay for us to do a lot of things that are challenging and struggling, there are some things that we shouldn't force ourselves through or to do. Like if you know that a task is something that somebody else can help you with, it's okay to ask for help or it's okay to accept help when somebody is offering it. And why this was so important for me is because it also helped me within my relationships with other people and my relationship with my husband. There would be times where he would want to help me and I'd be like, no, I got it. Just as an instinct, because that was my natural way of being, where I'm like, now I could just sit back and be like, okay, he got it, he can take care of it and releasing that control within my body and allowing me to be more within my feminine energy. So there are masculine ways of being and feminine ways of being. And I'm not a femininity coach at all. This is not a femininity channel. I'm only touching on this because it relates to my fibroid healing journey and me connecting back to myself because there was a time when I wasn't connected to myself up until recently and I'm still on that journey of redefining and rebranding myself as a woman and as a woman who was raised around a lot of men but also had to pick up a lot of other people's stuff. Now I can sit people's stuff down and say, hey, I need help with that. I'm just a girl and just allowing people to love on me and pour into me and it dawned on me last year as we were like planning my wedding I had women around me saying like just relax like let us help you and I didn't realize how hard that was for me to do and so now I'm being more intentional about allowing people to not serve me but allowing people to show up for me and give me things without me feeling like I need to give them something back or they need something in return. That was a conditioned mindset that I had learned. Like if somebody does something for you, that means you have to give them something back. There would be times where people would gift me stuff and I would feel like I have to give them a gift back. I don't know if I'm the only person that's like that, but I was never able to receive a gift or receive help without feeling like I owed somebody something. And so now I'm just operating in this space like it's okay for me to receive love, gifts, help, and it's okay for me to ask for them as well. Like I, I could never understand why people were just giving me things or just being nice to me. I really had to change my mind around that entire concept. But I am glad to say that I am in a better space now. Another thing that I'm doing is romanticizing my life journey. Okay, so so what I've really been focusing on is like romanticizing my healing journey with my skin, with my womb, with my plant-based journey, just making the experience more enjoyable. Because before, what I would do was I would dread it. I'd be like, oh man, I don't feel like doing that or I don't want to do that. And that creates an unhealthy, energetic, emotional environment within, within your body and within your mind. So when I switched my mindset to, I love this, I love showing up for myself, I love nourishing my body, I'm so grateful that I get the opportunity to do this for myself. My experience in life changed. I started to feel prettier, I started to feel more beautiful and confident and happy and looking forward to things instead of considering it a chore. I've dealt with a lot of insecurities with my body, with my skin, with my hair, and and when I would look in the mirror, I would be so sad. But I started realizing like, you are so beautiful. It took you so long to get to this point. Enjoy the journey, enjoy this process and enjoy where you are now. We oftentimes are our biggest critics where I have my husband here telling me I'm beautiful and I look busted. <laughs> I'm like, I need to learn to love me as much as he does. But I'm so grateful to have somebody like that in my environment because I haven't always had that in my experience. So now I'm taking dedicated time out to 
do my skincare routine and I'm looking forward to it like oh my gosh I can't wait to sit and do my facial steam I can't wait to sit and eat a good meal that I cook that I put my love into that's colorful and it makes me feel good and energetic like when you start eating foods that make you feel good it is quite literally a game changer like I know that we like comfort foods like burgers and fries and all that but when you get like a really good fulfilling nourishing bowl of foods that's flavorful listen I'm salivating just thinking about it because I have grown to love the process of nourishing and loving on my body instead of saying oh man I gotta do this again being grateful like I said and saying I'm so excited that I get to do this it's just changing your frame of mind around the actions to enjoy it so the third thing that I've been doing to feel more feminine and to connect to my femininity is my approach to how I look and the time that I'm putting into my appearance when I was in high school we wore uniforms Forms. When I was in college, I spent most of my time in the dance studio. So I would just wear sweatpants and hoodies because I was going to practice every day. So I never really took the time to really pour into myself unless it was a special occasion. And that poured in to how I showed up in my adult life once I graduated. And then I took on jobs that quite naturally drained me. And then I got to a point where I couldn't even afford to pour into myself. And so I think I was dealing with some depression around all of that that I had to come out of. It was like a cloud of darkness that was just following me around for years that I finally been able to get from under. Because I love getting dressed up. I love getting cute and doing my makeup and going shopping. But I had to overcome a lot of fear and internal dialogue that I was hearing and saying to myself in order to get to this point. So now I'm getting up and taking the time to get cute when I go to work and get cute going out. I used to be the girl who would put on heels and get dressed to go to Walmart. But after a while, I was just like, oh, I'm just throw on, you know, anything and just be looking crazy when I go out to the grocery store or the retail store or anything. And it's just like, girl, why would you come outside looking like that? I mean, looking bad. And I'm like, I, this is not even me. And I, I love how I feel when I take time to get ready and get cute. And it's just for me. It's not for nobody else because it just feels good. It makes me feel more like a woman. I love when I look good and I walk past a mirror or I take a picture of myself and I'm like, like you're so gorgeous. Like talking to myself like, mm. But there was a lot of negative self-talk that I had to overcome because I did gain a lot of weight and that can mess with your self-esteem and also dealing with fibroids can definitely affect your self-esteem and there were things that friends said to me that people that I was dating said to me that really affected my self-esteem and I took a lot of emotional blows that I had to heal from and forgive and overcome in order to get to this version of myself. I feel so good in my body and in my life now like now I'm I'm so proud of me and I love that I've been able to share the journey here with y'all as well and then the last thing that I've been doing have been doing like girly hobbies so I was doing my physical hobbies for us like skating but lately I've been painting and coloring and dancing you know activating my sacral chakra getting my hips moving and another thing that I've been getting into that I'm really excited about is decorating I talked about this before but I used to have extreme trauma around settling down and because I moved around I grew up in foster care I think this is like my 44th address and and it never felt safe or comfortable to call a place home. But I'm finally investing in my space. I want to put pictures on the walls and invest in new furniture and I'm really excited we just got a new uh, bed frame and we about to get a new couch and I'm just super excited and I'm actually sharing all of this on my vlog channel so if you like vlogs about home decor and fashion and wellness and all the things please be sure to check out my vlog channel A Starry Life. I'm having so much fun over there too and that's another thing 
why I created the second channel so that I could just have a space to do my creative hobbies. Whereas here, I'm showing up to give you value and to pour into you educationally. Over there, I can have more fun with like editing and music and all that stuff and not feel any pressure about showing up. I can just post whenever I want to post. So, so pouring more into my creative hobbies allows me to feel more feminine. And that's actually something that's true energetically when you have fibroids or you're dealing with a reproductive health issue, it can cause creative blockages. So by being intentional about being creative, it can allow you to connect with that feminine energy. So I know this was not like the typical femininity video and that was my intention, but either way, I hope that you found value in this video, that you learned something from this video. And if you did, please don't forget to give the video a thumbs up because it helps the algorithm to know that this video is valuable so that it can reach more people. Of course, please do not forget to subscribe to the channel and become one of my loved ones community. And as always, don't forget to be bold, be joyful, and always be fully loving yourself. And I will catch you in the next video. Bye.